tackle writing this story. So what was your process? What hap What did you do first? Well, the first thing that I did in writing Bill's story is I created this timeline. I wasn't really sure where I was going to start. I wasn't comfortable with words. So um, I jumped on the internet. Uh, which is probably not the great place to be the, the greatest place to begin your research, but I, I did find lots of articles about Bill. Um, and basically, okay, so where, when was he born? He was born in 1854 um, or 1856. That was one of the challenges in telling the story of a slave is that there were so many discrepancies in his in, in the dates in his life. So anyway, I put down the general time of his birth his death, and then I just sort of started researching all of the information that I could find about the in-between. Um, and you'll see here I have um, notes from information that I found on the internet, but then I also purchased books about Bill Trailer. This is another book, um, Deep Blues, Bill Trailer, 1854 to 1849. Um, a more scholarly piece on Bill Trailer. Another book that I used was Deep Blues, Bill Trailer, Self-Taught Artist by Mary E. Lyons. Um, and then there was a, a famous piece that was written about Bill Trailer in his time um, that published in Collier's Magazine. Um, and so then I, used, I what I did is I just put all of these sources on the timeline and again what I discovered is that none of the dates matched. Um, so then what I did was I tried to rely more on census dates. Um, and the, and, and the book um, Deep Blues, which is a more scholarly piece. Um, so that's kind of where I began. And then I just started trying to look for the story um, with, within Bill's life, because it can't be just a chronological telling of his life. I have to look for the, this, like my editor would tell me, what, what is the story within the story? Was there enough material available then to, to kind of get insights into the story behind the story? Um, or did you have to bring a lot of yourself to the project? Well, it is a, a nonfiction piece, um, and so it, it, everything is a true story. Everything in the story is true, down to the quotes. So the, nothing is made up. So it's on, so that was the challenge, trying to tell the story about a person who lived, you, you know, two hundred years ago, uh, more than two hundred years ago, and because he was a slave, he was considered property. Um, similar to a shovel or a wagon and of course no one kept records on their on their shovels or their property or their slaves and so it was that was that was that was one of the, the, the biggest challenges um, but yeah I was able to find enough um, based upon the facts that I researched and not, not only specifically Bill Trailer but about slavery in general in, in, in that area um, of, of Alabama so it involved not only Bill Trailer's life but just about the institution of slavery in general. Did, did that start to make the process easier for you then, uh, realizing that you only had so much to work with, this was your raw material, now you now you just had to move forward and push out a narrative? It was not easy. <laughs> huh? Okay. There was not an easy process. The process of uh, researching the information um, was a challenge, and, and, and again, like I say, the, 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 the dates um, and, and a lot of the, the facts around Bill's life um, didn't match up. That was a challenge. Um, the storytelling um, was a challenge. One of the things that my editor kept asking me was, "Why did Bill Trailer start to draw?" Um, yeah. To give you a little background on the story, so he was he was born a slave. Um, he was emancipated at nine years old. Um, he chose to remain on his master's farm until he was in his eighties, um, and then by then his master and his family had pretty much died off, and he was on the farm alone. Hmm. So he got you know, decided to leave the farm, got a little bit depressed and decided to leave the farm and he moved to the city and became homeless because he didn't have the skills to survive um, in the city. So he became homeless um, and depressed and started um, drawing on the backs of discarded cardboard as a way to recall his past. Um, in his 80s, he's doing this. In his 80s and over a, if I remember, over a two year period he created something like 1,500 drawings. Um, and so my editor, the question was, why? Why did he start to draw? And I put myself into Bill's shoes, and I thought, okay, um, I can see myself in my 80s. My family's, you know, my family's died off. I'm by myself. How would I recall my past? How would I, you know, connect with with my childhood? Well, I would pull out my photo albums, and I would look at pictures of myself. Well, you didn't have photo albums um, at that time. So I, I asked myself, so how would I come and make a connection with with my past? 
Um, and I would pull out my photo albums and I would look at myself as a child. I would look at my, 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 my children's childhood photos and that's how I would reconnect. And so that's how, that's how Bill did it as well. Bill uh, started drawing pictures as a way to recall his past.